It begins in the quiet places where the most revolutions actually start. Not on the front page of a newspaper, but in a slow, repetitive hum of instruments and a soft tapping of keys. A lab in Australia grows hundreds of bacterial strains from human gut samples. Another team in Europe refines a culture technique that had been more myth than method, and a small, stubborn cluster of researchers insist on coaxing sleeping viruses out of genomes to see what they will do when they wake up. What they pull from those cultures is not a parade of monstrous invaders, but a secret architecture. Hundreds of previously unknown viruses that live inside the bacteria of our intestines, phages that have been quietly shaping microbial ecosystems inside us for as long as humans have been human. And this is what I will talk about today on Knowing is Winning. This discovery is uh, at once intimate and vast. Intimate because the gut is as personal as breath. Vast because the gut microbiome is a teeming world whose rules ripple outward to influence inflammation, immune signaling, metabolism, and even how we respond to drugs and infections. For years, the virome of the human gut, uh, those viruses that infect bacteria, was known mostly as shadow maps on sequencing readouts, fragments of DNA signaling presence, but not behavior. Now, having isolated living bacteriophages and traced their relationships to specific bacterial hosts, scientists hold actual actors in a drama we previously inferred from footprints and echoes. The implications arrive slowly like tides. First, there is the immediate scientific pivot. Models of the microbiome must now incorporate dynamic viral players that can switch between dormancy and active infection, that can move genes among bacteria via transduction, and that can sculpt bacterial communities by killing or tempering particular strains. Because these viruses are often temperate, uh, integrating into bacterial genomes and sometimes carrying genes that change bacterial function, they are not merely predators, but modulators of bacterial behavior. When you change the bacteria, you change the chemistry of the gut, the immune system dialogues at the um, um, mucosal level frontier, and the systemic signals that travel from the intestine to the liver, the brain, and beyond. Therapeutic imagination follows the uh, science with predictable eagerness. If these phages can be cultivated, mapped, and understood, they may be engineered into precise tools. Targeted phage therapies that uh, remove harmful bacteria without collateral damage, or um, designer probiotics that include phage bacteria consortia tuned to rebalance inflammation, or um, living drugs that carry genetic payloads to alter microbial metabolism in ways that reduce carcinogenic processes. Think of a probiotic that does not merely supply a benign strain, but brings with it the phages that keep the strain in productive check and disable pathogenic neighbors. This is not science fiction, but a plausible blueprint suggested by the discovery of a living gut Virome. For people suffering from chronic inflammatory diseases, cancers with microbiome-linked um, etiologies, or infections with resistant bacteria, the potential is electrifying. Current antibiotic strategies are blunt instruments that knock down bacterial populations and often leave ecological vacuums that opportunistic or resistant species exploit. Phage-based interventions promise specificity. They can be evolved to target particular bacteria genotypes and, crucially, they can be used in tandem with microbes that restore ecological balance. Early experimental results are modest but encouraging. Altered phage populations correlate with disease states. Manipulating those populations in animal models shifts inflammation and tumor microenvironments. 
and lab-grown virums allow precise experiments that were previously impossible with only sequence data to guide hypotheses. The um, technological scaffolding that makes these uh, therapeutic visions possible is itself a story of slow adaptation and interdisciplinary generosity. Microbiologists collaborate with virologists, computational biologists with clinicians, and engineers with ethicists. Now, new culture systems, anaerobic chambers, microfluidic gut on chip devices, and multiplexed phage bacteria co culture platforms turn metagenomic after images into manipulable systems. Bioinformatics pipelines that once only sorted read counts now construct viral genomes, predict host specificity, and suggest mechanisms by which phages influence bacterial gene expression. When the first living viral models are assembled and shared, the field accelerates as groups once constrained by different methods can now test the same hypotheses with the same reagents and readouts. But the story of viruses in our guts is only half of the decade's viral awakening. At the opposite pole of scale, where climate and geology meet biology, another set of discoveries begins to trouble our sense of time. As polar and alpine ice melts, scientists working at archaeological dig sites and permafrost cores find ancient microbes and viral genomes preserved like messages in amber. Some of these ancient viruses are purely genomic fossils, you know, fragments of RNA and DNA that tell us about uh, evolutionary history. Others can be revived in controlled laboratory setting under strict biosafety supervision. Viruses that once circulated tens of thousands of years ago now coax back to activity to study their biology and evolutionary relationships. These experiments are not done lightly. They are done with um, an awareness that resurrecting the ancient is playing with a power we are only beginning to understand. The thaw reveals more than pathogens. It exposes ecology. Viral genomes recovered from ice reveal reservoirs of genetic diversity that challenge linear narratives of viral evolution. They show how viruses moved between hosts in ancient ecosystems, how viral genes recombine with bacterial and archaeal genomes, and how environmental change shaped viral dynamics. As scientists assemble these um, uh, poliovirums, they see patterns, bursts of viral activity tied to climate oscillations signatures of host jumps, and genetic modules that persist across epochs. This Asian genetic archive reshapes how we think about natural reservoirs and the deep time continuity of viral ecosystems. It also raises practical concerns. Thawing ice can expose previously sequestered microbes and nucleic acids, creating pathways for interactions between ancient and modern organisms that were impossible during the cold stasis of permafrost. Imagine um, glass blue eyes layered like stacked centuries, cracking open and disgorging genetic ghosts, viral genomes uh, stitched into the past, fragments of uh, epidemics and ecosystems that once ruled frozen landscapes. Now, pulled from permafrost and glacial tombs by heat and meltwater, these viruses are not cinematic supervillains of fevered headlines, but they are real, eerie, and unpredictable. Some are preserved like um, hammered coins in a vault, their sequences legible and strange, carrying genes that haven't been seen in, mo in a modern host in um, millennia. Others, under sterile lights and cautious hands, stir enough to teach us how evolution once shuffled its deck. The thrill is intoxicating and the chill runs deeper than ice. Uh, each revived genome is a message from deep time. How viruses jumped species, recombined genes and carved ecological niches when climates turned. 
Each is also a reminder that the past can fold back into the present. As glaciers retreat and permafrost slumps, the thaw could release not just molecules and methane, but a rolling archive of ancient infectious potential. The potential is not a prophecy, it is probability. In pockets where ancient pathogens find new pathways, where animals and humans overlap habitats altered by warming, unexpected encounters could occur. Small, local, and biologically meaningful. Sensational? Yes. Terrifying? Potentially, if we behave recklessly. The real drama is not uh, apocalypse, but of exposure a planetary scale experiment we did not choose to run, in which climate change unseals evolutionary experiments engineered by time. The spectacle is scientific. Genes that bridge eons, viral architectures that predate agriculture, evolutionary tricks that could teach us how pathogens adapt. The stakes are earthly. Public health system tested by surprises, ecosystems shuffled by novel microbial players, and ethical questions about whether resurrecting ancient life is ever worth the gained knowledge. This twofold viral awakening, the discovery of living gut virums, and the resurfacing of ancient viral archives interacts in unexpected ways. Techniques developed to culture phages from gut bacteria translate to culturing environmental phages recovered from thawing sediments. The same genomic tools that reconstruct phage-host interactions in the gut help map viral ecological networks in permafrost ecosystems. Conversely, the paleovirome offers evolutionary context for the modern phageome. Modules and genes found in ancient viral genomes can explain mechanisms observed in contemporary phages that modulate bacteria metabolism or immune interactions. Evolutionary biologists who once lamented the fragmentary nature of viral fossil records now hold whole genomes that reveal long arcs of genetics exchange. That deeper context um, enriches the um, therapeutic design. Engineers can look at evolutionary archives for phage elements that foster stability or inhibit undesirable gene transfer in bacterial populations, potentially guiding the design of safer, more durable microbial interventions. Back in the clinics, translational work moves at a human pace. Small clinical trials that test bacteriophage cocktails for antibiotic resistant infections Pilot studies introducing engineered phage bacteria consortia into patients with refractory inflammatory bowel disease, and proof of concept trials that use virome informed diagnostics to stratify cancer patients whose tumors respond to microbial modulation. Every results are careful. Some patients respond dramatically, others not at all. And everyone learns, of course. The variability is not a failure, but a diagnostic insight. It tells clinicians that the microbiome is individualized and that therapies must be tailored, informed by each patient's microbial environment landscape. Precision probiotics become less of a marketing buzzword and more of a clinical imperative. Matched phages, matched bacterial partners, and protocols that monitor community dynamics over time to avoid unintended consequences, such as um, horizontal gene transfer that could spread resistance genes. Outside of labs, ordinary people begin to understand that viruses are not metaphors for evil, but complex ecological agents. Documentaries and podcasts present stories of phage therapy success, of um, archaeologists uncovering ancient uh, microbial libraries and of communities adapting to uh, thawing landscapes. The discourse moves from fear to cautious curiosity. How do we live with the microbial richness embedded in our bodies and in the planet itself? How can medical systems leverage that richness to heal rather than harm? Or how can policy reduce the risk of 
ecological upheaval without stifling the research that might save lives. These conversations are uneven, sometimes clashing, but uh, their very existence is a form of public maturation about biological complexity. When you imagine a future shaped by these discoveries, do not picture only devices or drugs. Picture new professions, like uh, therapeutic virologists who are also ethicists, environmental stewards who monitor microbial health as closely as water quality, or um, communities uh, co-designing surveillance systems with scientists um, or students trained in the language of genomes and uh, ecosystems simultaneously. Picture a world where medical treatments are informed by evolutionary archives and where climate policy integrates microbial risk as a core variable. Picture two, the quieter human scale moments. A patient who regains quality of life after a phage-based therapy. A community spurred an outbreak through early de detection of a thocyte. Or a child who learns in school that microbes can be both friend and, and foe. And uh, that stewardship is the skill that navigates between uh, those two poles. In the end, these twin discoveries hundreds of new viruses in the human gut and the resurfacing of ancient viral archives from uh, melting ice, do not deliver a single tidy moral. They produce instead an expanded frame of how we relate to the microbial world and to the planet. They ask us to cultivate scientific uh, rigor hand in hand with social responsibility, to marry innovation with ethics and to listen to the long patient signals recorded in genomes and eyes alike. The future they open is not single trajectory toward cure or catastrophe. It is a branching set of possibilities shaped by how we choose to steward knowledge. So the new virums, both the ones living quietly inside our bodies and those sleeping in the eyes, become lessons in humility and opportunity. They teach us that complexity is not obstacle to be blasted aside, but a landscape to be navigated thoughtfully. They challenge us to build institutions that can manage risk while enabling discovery, to educate professionals who can spend disciplines, and to create policies that protect both public health and the public trust. If we meet the challenge, the discoveries of these viruses will be not just scientific milestones, but turning points in how humanity lives with the microbial and planetary worlds that sustain it. And this, this was Knowing is Winning. Thank you very much for watching.